I did a video evaluating a claim made by a person who existed. The claim was done in the form of a book that was very obviously fictitious in my opinion. And this is a lot like people saying, I'm just asking questions when they're making a positive assertion, demanding it be taken seriously. And then when you ask them to prove it, they say, oh, I don't have to prove anything. I'm asking you a question. It's a methodology for not having to prove something. Cheshire, England economics teacher Ken Webster made a claim, an assertion, in a book called The Vertical Plane, published originally in 1989, so it's pre-1990s. And it claimed that from 1984 to 1986, while in a cottage in Duddleston, England, that was built in the 18th century, <clears throat> his uh, a 16K byte or more BBC microprocessing computer that he had access to was running a copy of Edward processor ROM. It received data files from the year 1575 or something and 2109. So he hand wrote them onto the walls in chalk, these messages, then onto paper, and then as he found out that the system could be expanded to 256K or bigger, get a 20 meg hard drive, connect to Kermit and Telnet and BBS networks, and via two parallel ports, one of which is for printers exclusively, and it had one RS-423 serial port, he then decided to print them out. And then after a, after a while, he also figured out that he could dump them onto a floppy disk. A teacher said that they were written in the style of 17th or 16th century English, seeming to be authentic. The book also made a claim that some of the messages were sent by what a person in the past said was a Leem's Boyancet, or box of lights or light box. Some believers decided it couldn't be that. It had to be from Venice, Italy, and a man named Francoise or Francisco something or other who may have made a rudimentary me mechanism to emboss letters into paper for the blind and also for the sighted to read. <clears throat> this was only first mentioned in 1924 in an article, and it was not patented. There are no images for it. There's no primary source for the document. It's a short story done in 1924 about somebody heroically trying to make something for reading for the blind. More accurately, it was someone making a retrocon story about a mythology in Italy about the first piece of equipment for the blind to read. Um, instead of using dots impressed to the paper, it literally pressed the letters and you had to try to figure out what the letters were by using a specific font. But people decided that was it, but again, the person in the 1500s said it's a box of lights or a light box. And that's the assertion from the person who made this original assertion, Ken Webster. Now I'm going to dismantle this pretty quickly in a minute, but let's get on with this. The book is listed on most websites that are selling it as not being Nonfiction. It's listed under paranormal, haunting, channeling, ESP, alternate reality games, sci-fi, etc., but I don't see it listed in most places as nonfiction. Someone can put a book in the nonfiction category when they sell it on eBay and maybe Amazon, obviously should be able to do that, because you can claim that Ken Webster on his honor said that this happened, and maybe it did happen to him, but there's no way to prove that it really is true. Again, someone's making a positive assertion in the comment section that Ken Webster had this experience and gave a bunch of vague assertions that I had to go dig up because they wanted to make it a rabbit hole that I could get stuck in, like a lot of people do in the comment sections. People came by and said, oh, well, no, it wasn't a box of lights or whatever the heck I said in the video or whatever was in the description <clears throat> or at any of the links. No, no, it was something else. That's not what was said by the person who wrote this book. Now, if you look up the original pre-1990 version of it and find out what Ken Webster actually asserted, we can have a conversation. Now, the reason I'm not directly quoting any part of the book, nor am I claiming that I read the book, is because people have had their channels flagged by whoever the publisher is now who owns the rights to it for copyright violations, even though it's a, a false claim. A false claim can take your channel down for a period of time. I'm not going to go through that. I'm not going to claim I read the damn book. Even though I had a link in the original video to a downloadable copy that 
went missing right after my video came out because they got flagged. And anybody else citing the same thing got a copyright strike or got banned. A couple of people got screwed over on Reddit for posting links to it. It was verboten. So now I have to go through that video and remove that. The BBC Micro had error codes that were numerical. 15 was subscript error. 7 is no function. 5 is missing comma. 1575. 21 is VE root, negative VE root error, whatever that is. And 9 is missing quotation. Or could be comma versus, you know, double comma versus single comma or single quote versus double quote. I'm interpreting it, but I'm not going to run it through a uh, ASCII converter to find out what it's called. The point is, if you're not aware of it, looking at a file dump error messages while being interspersed with commands or instructions to echo something to the screen, like what would happen if a ROM-based word processor broke, <clears throat> might create some of these numbers. Just saying. Now I'm going to bring up something pretty damned obvious. This is a claim by Ken Webster that he had a message show up on his computer that he didn't know the source of, and the message said it was from two different centuries. Two, several messages said it was from centuries in the past and centuries forward. And the presumption on everyone's part is, turn off your brain, don't have any critical thinking skills, and don't evaluate the claim made by Ken Webster, which is what my video is about. I'm not evaluating the book. I'm evaluating the claim because I don't have to read the entire book to find out the basic assertion. Ken Webster is saying, if you're taking this as a nonfiction work, that his computer did something, the computer he had access to, did something he couldn't understand, and this is back when everybody was computer illiterate, so he decided it was, it was time travel of data. <clears throat> and I'm not supposed to question that. A book published as nonfiction about a real-life experience can't be sci-fi. Counterpoint. Bullshit. I'm not even going to go any further with it. Nobody ever lies to me if they say what I want to believe. WapTech is pointing out that a computer couldn't do these things unless... Uh, did I mention that this thing could do Telnet and could communicate with BBSs? And the, in Britain, you could get services that would let you have computer access. You could work at a school like he did. The first places this actually happened at. Somebody could have just tunneled into it. Yes, it's called tunneling and traversing to put information onto the word processor. It's ROM-based. He left it on all the time, which you don't want to do if you don't want to be broken into. It was trivial to break into computers at one point. But more importantly, it could have just been a friend of there just playing a joke on him, which was actually something he brought up, or other people have. I don't know which. You're going to have to look that up, right? Because I can't quote it verbatim because I'll get flagged. Next thing is... Why are you assuming somebody putting out a story that's normally listed as fiction is telling you a fact? He also has a direct quote from someone else saying, I didn't say the story was factual. I said it happened. There's a very big tell going on here that you did. It's literally in the first couple of pages. You claim I didn't read the book. I, I'm, I didn't read the book. I, I'm not going to claim I read the book because... People get flagged over this. Take the time to read a book if you're going to make a video about a book. That's not what the person typed, but that's what they meant. It's not about the book. It's about the claim the person made. But you're supposed to evaluate the book. No, I'm not. I'm supposed to evaluate the claim. The claim made about him, which was echoed by him in the book, if you're taking it at face value, is that his computer acted as a time portal for data, for data because it said so. And a Nigerian prince is going to give you money. But but it's trivial with uh, serial and parallel ports to hook up a, a basically the equivalent to a modem, although it would actually be much more simple at the time, to hook up to a network in the area. Um, or, again, somebody could have just been typing this into the word processor when he was out of the room and just fucking with him. There were plenty of people that could have done it. And again, he might just not be telling the truth. So pe some people come by as apologists and say, no, that, that device with the weird name, it wasn't Lightbox, which is what the author is claiming it was. It was actually some other damn thing. I addressed that in the video and spent too much time on it. He did not have access to a physical device. He had access to a Lightbox. 
the person making the assertion from the 1500s that really didn't exist was describing a physical object called a light box, basically a description of a computer monitor. And then the claim is the person talked to it. So the very difficult to do thing in the 1980s of a computer interpreting speech and putting it in text, which was a trope in every sci-fi movie, and is still difficult. Some of you still find out that it doesn't get your names and words right, especially if you're Scottish or Irish. You, you, you do understand that that was a trope at the time that was a strong one. What is the story about? The ghost signal. Radios were considered sci-fi items. And there's so many, so many beautiful stories. One of my favorite stories that I read when I was a kid is almost identical. Somebody gets a radio from a store and drops it. It detunes it, which is actually something that would happen with radios. And you'd get weird frequencies, and, and it would demodulate weird. And they would hear messages from the future. Now, how would that happen in reality? Somebody claiming to be from the future and fucking with you with a ham radio or a CB? Because that actually did happen. There are actual documented cases of people being freaked out because they didn't believe that maybe somebody transmitting a message could be lying. Again, somebody could be typing stuff into a word processor and be lying. And more importantly, the author of the book could be, quote, lying, or it's a short story or a book, and it's not meant to be taken seriously, and it's not nonfiction. Again, it's not listed as nonfiction anywhere I can find today, but you found it somewhere that it says it's nonfiction. And that's your assertion, that nobody can lie. Creatively, for a short story. Alternate reality game. The back rooms has to be true because someone said it is. A book published as nonfiction about a real life experience can't be sci fi. Bullshit. Those experiences, what they were due to, is another question. No, it's answered. I've already gone through all the possible outcomes, including someone plugging in a cable and just going in through teletermal to the to the BBC micro. Just acting as another console machine, communicating with them, or typing it into the word processor and giggling from another room or another building. The cabling required is very minimal. I, I'll, I'll do a video on how to do it if I can get a hold of a BBC Micro. I don't know where I can get one. But I've worked on one and done it. I, I had access to one for a couple of weeks. No joke. Some geek that collected. it. The man from the 1500s spoke into what he called this light box. It didn't have access to any physical device, but it's described as a physical device. Take the time to read a book before you're going to make a video about a book. I didn't make a video about a book. I made a video about a person's claim he's disguising and wrapping up in an enigma of a book. If you publish a book and, cl and you're claiming that it is nonfiction, then I'm going to take the assertions apart. If you're claiming it's a short story or a sci-fi story, I have nothing to evaluate. But people came by saying, no, it's not a short story or, or a sci-fi story. It's really something that happened. Okay, how would this have to work? In the year 2109, in the year 1500, whatever, and the Earth being here at 1980s, the planets would have to line up in such a way, in all time periods, to where the Earth was on the same side of the sun, therefore the same month and day, and the same hour, minute, and second. So you'd have to find when they line up, and then somehow account for this distance to this distance, having a time tunnel, a quantum tunnel for radio signals. I've done a video on how a... a, a Time tunnel can happen with black holes. Where the fuck is it? No, it's not CERN. No, it's not. Because they don't make black holes. Because you don't know what you're talking about if you actually bring that up. Also, please look up a little short story below about a tradition the U.S. Navy has of calling out to sailors that have been gone for decades. Hoping to contact them back in time. If a historical nonfiction book turns out to be wrong, can we just call it fiction now? Or are you going to insist that they were completely right about the shape of North America when the map doesn't match? Oh, wait a minute. That's literally another thing I debunked. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. And I hope I've answered your questions. And I'm going to title this similarly to the previous video. And I'm going to have to remove one of the links so it doesn't get flagged for copyright violations, even though the link's dead. Because, again, someone's really gatekeeping this story. And... Some of you really don't like it when I point out that you don't get your story straight, and apparently none of you read this book you claimed I'm supposed to read. That's so typical. Wow, it's almost like it's the damn Bible.